our most loving friend. Everyone, if you can come and stand. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, apologies for the delay. You know, they say he who speaks the last needs to speak the least. Your executive chairman has basically said a lot, and I don't want to uh, say too much. But as I've highlighted uh, previously, uh, and the point that he makes is that uh, you need to understand where you were, where you are now, are more focused on the future also. Uh, we need to understand where we need to be. The reality is that, and I'm, some people may think I'm a bit anal about this, but the reality is that this structure here is looking very nice, it's looking very clean. If you don't maintain it, very soon you, again you could be rated one of the worst airports in the world. Because believe you me, every other country is trying to do the best. Every other country is trying to improve the airport, most countries anyway. So the, the trick in all of this is now that you have a very good structure in place within the organization, you have a very good uh, infrastructure, hard infrastructure, the, the trick is to maintain it and expand it. The trick is to also expand your soft infrastructure, whether it's your IT systems, whether it's thinking of new business processes within the organization or processes at the airport here, so people feel that I need, you know, they like enjoying going to the airport. That really is the trick. And I think there is a, the, the point that uh, the executive chairman made uh, is that there needs to be a sense of pride amongst all of you. I mean, hopefully, these reports that he was talking about, the sky tracks and the other one, uh, what's it called, I forget the name, the travelers, travelers guide, travelers guide, that you, I'm hoping that you get copies of it. You should get copies of it, you should take it to your homes, your spouses, your family, your children, should know that all of you have actually contributed to this rating of this airport. And they should feel proud about the fact that all of you have contributed to it. So we need to develop this culture of, you know, uh, trying to attain the best, a culture of service. If you go to countries like Singapore, every single organization has a gearing towards ensuring that Singapore does well. It's not just state-owned enterprises, it's also the private sector. They carry similar logos so you know that everybody has a particular service level that they want to attain. An airport actually is one of the key organizations that actually can drive the change. As I've said to you before, believe you me, many people, they come to this airport, they feel very proud of the fact that we've got such a fantastic airport. There is a sense of patriotism that arises from this. You had uh, the prince and princess of what's it called Sussex, Dutch and Duchess of Sussex. They were here. Your airport was shown throughout the world. Pictures were taken, and the backdrop it provided was looked fantastic. So your airport is around the world. Now, if you had a shabby airport, you know, probably would not have had the function over here we would feel, probably feel a bit mandua to bring them over here. But now we can do that with a sense of pride. So we can do that throughout our country, not just at the airport, but in various other places. You would have your friends, family working in other organizations. Tell them what you have achieved or what they can do, the potential for them. And I think that really is very, very critical. I, I want to congratulate all of you. You know, there's, there's many aspects to running a business. One, of course, is the fact that you need to have a good profit margin. You need to make money, uh, not just to make a profit, but need to make money to be able to invest for the future. Many businesses in Fiji, uh, in particular in state-owned enterprises, some of them made money. No organization in Fiji has or currently is making the levels of profit that airports Fiji uh, makes. In fact, all the dividends that you're paying to government if you add that or put that on one side and all the other state-owned enterprises and the dividends they pay to us, it still pays into insignificance. So you're the highest contributor to dividends. So ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the point that I want to make is that it's not just the profit margin, 
It's about ensuring that you keep money aside to invest in the future. There are many, even infrastructure, if you see in Suba, for example, the electricity cables they put 50 years ago, 60 years ago, we've now had to come and fix it up because the wires are all being broken, it's wearing out. Nobody ever had a fixed maintenance program. And the same thing with roads. Many roads were built, there was never any maintenance program. So money was not kept aside to make sure that you continue to this use the infrastructure at a particular level that you currently use it at. So Airports Fiji has, despite not borrowing a single cent from government to build this, going out to the private sector themselves, to the banks, and borrowing money, we did not even provide a government guarantee for this. Other state-owned enterprises, when they go and borrow money, the banks require them to, for government to give a guarantee. In this case, we didn't have to give a guarantee, which we were most grateful for because it does affect our balance sheet. Now, so you've got that profit margin. You now also need to keep money aside. You also need to invest in your people. And I'm glad that the executive chair is talking about that and how teams are working better. You need to have specific career paths. You need to feel, okay, maybe if I'm starting at a junior level, one day through training, through aspiring to do better, I can climb the ladder. And there's a lot of potential for you to do that. And we need to create a work environment that people feel good about waking up in the morning and coming to work. That's, there are many aspects of running a business. So I want to uh, thank all of you for achieving what you have achieved. And indeed, being the pre I can safely say this, you are the premier state-owned enterprise. No other state-owned enterprise comes close to you. I mean, many of these things have not come easy, I can tell you. I mean, your, um, all the rental here was price control when we actually removed it. Many people criticized us for that. There are people who are working in this organization who are very critical of the restructure. Some have gone, some have now reconfigured themselves to be part of the organization. And that type of transition you've been through, the trick now, of course, is for you to be able to position yourself for the future. So I'd like to thank all of you for your contribution. Thank all of you for your teamwork. Please, as I always say, keep the airport clean, keep it happening, keep the processes smart, and continue to attract the level of interest, not just in terms of public pride, but in terms of investment. I have uh, much pleasure in announcing the the bonus. You know, yesterday I was at Fiji Ports Terminal Limited, where they in fact uh, received uh, bonuses twice in a year. Of course, they did not receive the same amount as you. They're not a bigger organization like yourself. But about a week or so ago, I was at uh, Fiji Pine Limited and Tropic Wood Limited, where all the staff also received uh, bonuses too. And you know, uh, very handsome amounts. The reality is, ladies and gentlemen, is that many organizations in Fiji today in particular state-owned enterprises or organizations that are started by government are actually receiving bonuses. Some of them are receiving bonuses based on your individual performances, which you should, which is based on the individual KPIs, but also organizations now receiving bonuses of the staff because of the overall performance of the organization. So the proposed bonus, and it is now fixed, and those earning between 8,200 uh, to, uh, to 19,900, We'll get a fixed bonus payout of $1,000. And there's about 313 staff. Those staff who are earning between $20,000 and $29,000 will receive $1,500 um, a fixed uh, sum. There's about 106 of you in that category. And those staff over $30,000 will get 5% uh, of their base salary, which is a little over 100 of you. So ladies and gentlemen, as a percentage, if you look at it, those people who are in fact earning between uh, $8,000 dollars $19,000, as a percentage, they're getting a lot higher than what they earn uh, in a year, which is of course fantastic. The overall payout of the bonuses is about $816,004.62. So that's how much AFL is paying out. Please use your money wisely. Don't drink it all in one night, um, or you know, uh, in, in also have a good time at the same time. Uh, I'd like to wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a fantastic New Year. Please understand that we are at the cusp of moving on to the next period of our economic growth, and there's enormous potential. And I can tell you, 
We're already talking to a lot of overseas investors who are very keen. They like the fact that we have a, a st uh, stability after the elections, the fact that they like the economic policies of the government, and they want to come and work together with the government to invest. We not only create economic opportunities for them, but also economic opportunities for us, resulting in new jobs and also much better to working terms and conditions. So thank you very much, and I wish you a, a pleasant day. Thank you.